Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today let's talk about the fact that Hasbro has owned Dungeons and Dragons longer than TSR. It's a big fact. It just happened this year. It happened about a month ago. Uh, it's a big deal, right? So, and I and basically, um, so basically, let's let's do the math. So TSR owned um, Hasbro from. 1974 all the way up through 1997 right so what is so 74 you got 6 then 17 23 years and actually uh, Hasbro bought it in 1999 right yeah so maybe you know maybe a little earlier than that but at this point both companies own, both TSR and Hasbro owned it for a little over two decades. And at this point, just this year, we had the, you know, the specific event where Hasbro has now owned TSR longer, ha, ta, ha, excuse me, Hasbro has owned Dungeons and Dragons longer than TSR. So let's talk about this, all right? So Dungeons and Dragons has only had three owners in its entirety. Uh, TSR owned it between 1974 and 1977, and 19, 1974 and 1997. Wizards of the Coast bought it, and then Wizards of the Coast turned around and sold it to Hasbro. And ha Wizards of the Coast was bought lock, stock, and barrel. The whole company was, uh, you know, Wizards of the Coast was acquired by Hasbro, and they acquired. Dungeons and Dragons at the time. So you only had three owners. You had TSR, Wizards of the Coast, and Hasbro. Okay. Now Hasbro has now been the longest, the longest owner. So what do we learn from this new emerging fact? So one, this is very exciting. And actually, I'm gonna take a moment to say congratulations to Hasbro. I think a lot of people give Hasbro a hard time for owning Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and there's a lot of grump grump about Hasbro, you know, oh, if they only did this, and oh, if they only did that, you know, I have an incredible amount of sympathy for Hasbro, I, and, and any owner of, of Dungeons and Dragons, because the one thing I understand about Dungeons and Dragons is, boy, does Dungeons and Dragons mean different things to different people, right? Uh, for some people, it's a game. For some people, it's about representation. For some people, it's an element of Americana. For some people, it's a life catalyst, you know, that is used as a journey to make yourself a better person. There's a lot, and also there's a lot of weird, very, for some people it's therapy. I, I have a good friend who's like, oh, I don't I can't afford a therapist. I'm just going to like crush him, you know, goblins this weekend in D&D. Or take my rage out that way. And I'm like, mm, this is kind of odd. You should probably see a, a, a therapist. But he's like, I ain't got money for that, right? And actually that's a real thing. Good therapists are not cheap, right? So like, while, you know, I feel like television's always like, oh, you know, therapists, everybody should have a therapist. Well, everybody got, got that kind of money. It's In fact, it's incredibly expensive, right? And yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> good therapists are not cheap. That's that's a fact, right? And it's just a reality of life, right? So, uh, but Dungeons and Dragons is a lot of things to a lot of people. So with all that said, what are the lessons we learn from Hasbro owning Dungeons and Dragons? Well, there's a very big lesson is that, and that is, I think one of the things that comes out is, uh, Gary Gygax was an absolute artistic genius, and he built um, Dungeons and Dragons as a life catalyst, as an uh, as an element of Americana, as a vector for art, a vector for narrative, a vector for gaming, right? Um, a vector for literature. Like it was just this world breaking, you know, epic thing, right? But Gary Gygax was not the best business person, right? And so, businessman, right? He just wasn't. And the reality is, I wouldn't even say he was a bad businessman. He just wasn't good. It's very hard to say he was good. He lost control of what he built within... Uh, he was out by the end of 1986. And so, in 12 years, he went from hero to zero, right? Like, he was the hero of Dungeons & Dragons in 1974, and in 1986, he was nothing in Dungeons and Dragons. He was literally out, like out the door with not even a writing credit to his name, right? So it, it you know, he just wasn't a good businessman. So uh, let's talk about Hasbro. Hasbro gets it done when it comes to business. So one of the things that we need to realize is Hasbro has been. Uh, let's talk about it. 
Hasbro have been, has been without a doubt the best Guardians Guardian Dungeons Dragons ever had, bar none. Okay, so they have done a better job of balancing the artistic and the commercial than Wizards of the Coast ever did. Wizards of the Coast doesn't matter; they owned it for two years, right? They're just, like count them out, right? Um, and then uh, TSR was always great at the artistic side, but was so bad at the commercial side that the game was always con- teetering on the br- on the brink of of um, of insolvency. And they did it twice. They ran it into the ground money wise twice, even after they had learned their lesson. Like it seemed like they should have had a you know a harsh enough slap on the wrist in 1986, and still they were in the same situation 11 years later, right? So. TSR was just bad at the commercial side. It was never really a sound guardian for Dungeons & Dragons. Hasbro has been an incredibly sound guardian for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, They have done their due diligence on uh, on the artistic side. They have surpassed TSR in both writing, art, uh, rules, rules design. The reality is Hasbro has been far better for Dungeons & Dragons than TSR ever was. And they did it both on the artistic side and they did it on the commercial side. Hasbro has been incredibly stable. And this is important. You cannot, cannot, cannot forget how important Hasbro's financial stability is to Dungeons and Dragons. Why is that? Well, guess what? Dungeons and Dragons, every single decade of its life has needed a savior. Okay? Now, in the 20... In 2008... Okay, fourth edition came out. What was the savior of Dungeons and Dragons in 2008? Right, in fourth edition there was no savior. Right, it was just it was losing money. It was losing. Uh, that's a good question. I don't even know if it was losing money. It was definitely losing followers. It was losing its community. Its community was sundered in half. And so, what saved Dungeons and Dragons through the fourth edition war, through the fourth edition years? I'm going to tell you, My Little Pony. Star Wars, um, G.I. Joe, uh, Monopoly. These are all Hasbro brands. And they made sure that when Dungeons & Dragons had cocked it so sick, so sideways that the brand that Dungeons & Dragons was a hair's breadth away from being beaten forever and forgotten and being a, a footnote at the, you know, at the foot of Paizo Games and Pathfinder... That, but the reality is it didn't matter. It never mattered if Dungeons & Dragons wasn't making it money during 4th edition because Hasbro was so financially strong from My Little Pony, from G.I. Joe, from um, Monopoly, from uh, Star Wars, from these, from these other toy brands. They had more than enough money to be strong, to be healthy, and to not be losing a single dime to, and to not have to worry about money that wasn't coming in from from Dungeons and Dragons, the financial uh, stability of Hasbro is so strong, right? That it's it's arguable Dungeons and Dragons may never need to make another dime ever, right? Um, because the reality is, it it has an incredibly valuable name, and that is a big deal today. I don't think people have any idea. What the value of a name is today. It's it's it could be the most valuable thing that exists today, right? Like if you if you have a well known name and nobody in the world and you're just uh, you're bad at what you do, you could still you could win some of the highest positions in the world, right? It could be you could be completely milk toast at what you do, but if people know your name, you could take the highest positions, all right? Like, I'm telling you, it's a very real thing, right? So the reality is um, Hasbro has been incredibly good for, for Dungeons and & Dragons, and I'm going to say it flat out. Hasbro has been far better for Dungeons & Dragons than TSR ever was. Don't get it confused. Hasbro is the best guardian that Dungeons & Dragons has ever had, bar none. And Dungeons & Dragons owes a lot to Star Wars, to My Little Pony, to G.I. Joe, to uh, and and you know what and we just keep adding new brands to that right a big one Hasbro just acquired Lock Stock and Barrel Power Rangers right they own it they own the whole thing right and that the fact that they do means that Dungeons and Dragons is safer than ever and Hasbro just keeps moving it just keeps dealing with huge problems like the pandemic 
it was ready, you know, and it, and it struggled, right? And I, I tell you, I think when the pandemic started, Hasbro stock was around like $110. But at some of the deeper parts of the pandemic, it was down around 80, right? Like, you know, they've had to weather some storms. They work hard, they get it done. Hasbro protects Dungeons and Dragons. I'm incredible, th incredibly thankful to Hasbro. And I will never forget the fact that Hasbro has been a better guardian to Dungeons and Dragons than, um, than uh, TSR ever was. No two ways about it. That's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.